Hello everyone, welcome back to the second lecture of the web development course at the UR. In the last lecture, I presented the course syllabus. I described the material that we are going to take throughout the course. And I started with a brief introduction in chapter 1 of the textbook that we are going to take in this course. In this lecture, I will continue the chapter 1 introduction. We, would, uh, we should finish this chapter by the end of this lecture. Most of this chapter has, is general information that uh, you need to generally know for uh, your uh, knowledge about web development. You are not required to memorize any material in this chapter. Just uh, make sure that you understand it very well and you are knowledgeable uh, very well about it. Uh, the most important topic in this chapter is related to the HTML uh, programming language and to the HTTP protocol that uses that allows us to uh, send and receive HTML objects. In this uh, section, section 1.6, I will talk briefly about the HTTP protocol. Uh, protocol. Uh, this protocol is usually covered in the networking course. Uh, in, in the networking course, we uh, cover in detail all uh, related topics to HTTP. However, we will uh, go over them briefly uh, at the beginning of this course uh, in order to make you uh, review them and uh, know the details of them if you want to uh, when we talk about them later uh, when we develop our programs uh, we will be using some concepts related to the HTTP protocol. In general, any web page that exists on the internet whether it is a static or dynamic web page, the programming language in which this web page is written is the HTML markup programming language. I talked in the previous lecture about the difference between a uh, general programming language like C++ or Java and between a markup language like HTML or XML. So please review that and make sure that you understand it very well. Now, the extension of the any file that is written in HTML is .html or .htm. Now, .htm was an old extension that was created for uh, some old system that were not compatible with HTML. For now, all systems are compatible with HTML and uh, we rarely see uh, any web file that has the .htm extension. So uh, inside uh, documents, inside HTML documents, we could have hyperlinks. Hyperlinks are uh, objects that allow you to, uh, to request other objects when you click on these objects. So a hyperlink could be a text, an image, uh, a file, any object you can put inside it a hyperlink. We will learn when we talk about the HTML programming, about the HTML tags, how we can insert a hyperlink tag inside the tag of any object. So when we click on a hyperlink, we are directed toward a certain web page or we are directed to download a certain object. Which means that when we click on a hyperlink, we are sending an HTTP request to a certain web server that contains a certain object and then the web server will put this object into an HTTP reply packet and will send the packet to the browser or the web client that requested this object by clicking on the hyperlink. Both images and text might be, might be hyperlinked and also there are some other uh, web objects you can create a hyperlink inside them. One of the famous hyperlinks is the hyperlink to of the email address. Uh, you, sometimes when you click on a hyperlink, uh, the, your default email uh, software or tool will open and you are uh, directed to send an email to a certain email address. In this case, uh, this is a special uh, type, special kind of hyperlink that is embedded in the object. It's called an email hyperlink. So uh, how to create uh, an email hyperlink, the address, the URL to which uh, in, uh, of the hyperlink, instead of it being a, an ordinary URL which starts with www.something.com.edu or any other thing, instead of a web URL, you put instead of it 
uh, the URL mail to you see at the beginning mail to this mail to is standard to uh, as a email hyperlink after that you put a column and then you put the email address to which you want to send the email so when you create a hyperlink that contains an email uh, when you click on this hyperlink automatically the browser will open for you the uh, your default uh, email software which could be Outlook or any other email software and the email address that you have written here will be inserted into the to uh, field in the message inside the uh, email uh, software <coughs> also a hyperlink uh, could, uh, uh, could uh, be uh, you can put inside a hyperlink a certain web object it doesn't have to be a web page or an image it could be any web object any object on the web can be uh, the, the URL of this object can be put uh, in the uh, hyperlink so when you click on this hyperlink your browser will request the object via an HTTP request message and the uh, web server that contains the web object will reply uh, with an HTTP reply message that contains the object so when you uh, receive the object in your web browser if the web browser is able to open the object it will open it inside the web browser inside the, uh, the software if it's not able to open the uh, object it will automatically download the object for you and save it in your downloads folder for you to open it using the tool that you uh, specify we all know about URLs uniform resource identifiers any object on the internet has something called the uniform resource identifier the URI so any web object will have a URI now objects that are uh, HTTP objects that uh, start with HTTP so these are web objects these are called uh, this these uh, objects uh, have something called the uniform resource locator so in general any object on the internet on the web that is saved inside a web browser will have a URI uniform resource identifier when you request this object uh, with uh, the HTTP protocol now we call this in this case the URI we call it a URL a uni a uniform resource locator so any object that can be requested uh, with HTTP when you request this object using HTTP then this object will uh, the, yeah, the URI of this object will be called uniform resource locator or URL now what does URL contain there are specific uh, certain specific fixed elements of the URL that we are going to see let's examine, uh, let's examine a, a sample a URL like this one here and see its uh, elements and what does this each element mean the first element in a URL or URI is the protocol that is used to send and receive this object so don't forget that URLs and URIs are identifiers, IDs of objects on the web. Now, each type of object you can uh, send it and receive it via uh, by using a certain uh, protocol. There are many protocols that can be used on the internet, not only the HTTP protocol. There are many other protocols such as FTP, SMTP, and so on. When you are sending and receiving this object using HTTP, this is called a uh, HTTP object so this will become a URL the first uh, element of the URL as, as I said is the name of the protocol that you are using to fetch this object to receive this object some objects they are saved on FTP servers so instead of putting HTTP here you put FTP in this case you are requesting the server to send you the object using an FTP message not an HTTP message you are using another protocol emails that are sent between email servers and email clients are sent using the SMTP protocol so instead of putting at the beginning HTTP then the identifier of the email will start with SMTP so the first element is the name of a protocol that you are using to send and receive the object Followed, following the name we always have a column and two slashes this is a standard so you have a column and two slashes following the name of the protocol after that you have the uh, address of the uh, server that hosts the object so for example when I say here www.title.com 
this is the address of a server now on the internet each device on the internet have something called the IP address IP is an abbreviation for internet protocol you, you should have taken the networking course before so you should know the details of the internet protocol and how it is used uh, to uh, enable different devices on the internet to communicate with each other <coughs> each device that needs to join a network especially the internet should have an IP address using the IP protocol the IP address uh, we have now uh, uh, several versions of IP that are used the traditional one is the IPv4 in which the address contains 4 bytes each byte is represented as a uh, digital number between 0 and 255 uh, we separate uh, 4 bytes uh, after we write each one in a decimal format we separate them with dots so in this case we create uh, an IP address for example 192.168.30.40 uh, now this is an IP address IP addresses are IDs of machines on the internet each machine have a different IP now the, the users cannot uh, communicate with each other using IP addresses you will never be able to memorize IP addresses like you memorize uh, uh, something like www.title.com or www.facebook.com so uh, text is easy for users to uh, memorize and use uh, always when they want to type the ID of a certain server but IP addresses it's very difficult so IP addresses are used to communicate between machines the users that uh, use these machines they use the uh, address the URL address of the server which is here www.title.com <coughs> now how does the internet how does the devices change the URL address into an IP address in order to use this uh, URL address they cannot understand that title.com meaning the machine which is located in the USA for example in this certain data center they need to uh, machines need to know the IP address of the server and the IP address of the client. that's why we have something called the domain name system or the DNS the DNS is a distributed database that is distributed among several servers located in various places in the internet and in this database there is a uh, 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 there are uh, there, there are uh, huge uh, tables that contain inside them tuples each tuple contain inside it the URL and the uh, corresponding IP address of a certain machine on the internet in this way when you want to uh, send a packet a, an HTTP request for example to any uh, server on the internet when I type www.google.com inside my uh, browser what happens in this case that uh, my browser needs to know the IP address my browser here needs to know the IP address of Google so uh, how will my uh, browser know the IP address of Google it will send a request to the DNS server it, it will uh, uh, it has inside it uh, inside the browser it, there will be saved the IP address of the DNS server my browser will send a request to the DNS server sending to it please tell me the IP address of the URL www.google.com the DNS server will uh, collaborate with other servers if necessary to, it will search in the whole database to find the IP address of the requested URL and it will return to my browser the IP address now I can put that IP address in the HTTP request that I want to send to the server so each time each time you want to send a, a, a request to a server that you don't know its IP address you need to do this step you need to contact uh, your browser will contact the DNS uh, server the domain name system server uh, uh, sending to it the URL and the domain name uh, server will not uh, will uh, respond to, the, to your browser with the corresponding IP address of the server and you will put this IP address in the HTTP request message that you send to the server now someone might ask uh, why don't I just uh, save all IP addresses in my machine you can't actually do that because their size is huge so uh, uh, you imagine the number of servers on the internet we have uh, maybe hundreds of millions of, of servers on the internet so it's not feasible for each and every machine on the internet to save the IP addresses of all these servers in addition to that 
uh, each day, each maybe each minute, new servers are added, new IP addresses are added, and IP addresses change all the time. Also, we don't have static IP addresses except for specific uh, famous servers. So it's not feasible for you to uh, uh, keep this load always in your machine and uh, always check and change the IP addresses and add new IP addresses. That's why the DNS, the uh, domain name system distributed database, uh, carries the load of uh, saving and updating the IP addresses and the corresponding URLs of all machines on the internet so that you can query it and retrieve from it any IP address that you want. This is the second part of the URL, which is uh, www.title.com, which is the name of the server, the domain name of the server that you want to send a request to, which has inside the DNS a certain IP address. Now, the remaining part, after you put the domain name of the server, the remaining part is the path to the file, to the object that you want to get from that server. So here, when I say slash books slash, this means that this object that I want to download to get from this server is located in the path uh, box default default uh, uh, network folder then inside it we have box inside box we have the objects that you want to download so after the name domain of the server we have the path to the object that you want to get from the server finally at the end of the path we have a slash and then we have the name of the object that you want to get from the server okay, this all of these constitute the uh, URL uh, of the object on the internet on the web. Now, in some cases, I might have uh, sections or parts inside the uh, uh, object. Example: When the object is a web page, here downloads.html. This is a web page. There might be sections inside the web page. So I want to go directly to a certain section. So I put the name of the section after the name of the object. At the end of the name of the object, I put slash, then I put the hashtag, then the name of the section, which will take me to that specific section when the object is fetched. Also, when you send GET requests instead of, uh, oh, sorry, when you send uh, POST requests, uh, you can also add other, uh, sorry, when you, get, you send GET requests, but in, in the GET requests, you are filling a form, you are sending the form data. Then, uh, at the end of the name of the object, you put values of parameters. We will talk about that shortly in the next slides. <coughs> so, I have covered these topics. This is what I talked about. So, the request is sent from the web client, which is usually a web browser, to a web server. And then, the web server will get the object from the specified path and will send it back uh, via the internet to the web browser to be displayed or downloaded, downloaded by the web browser. Now, the main, the main two messages that are exchanged between uh, a web client and a web server are called an HTTP request message from the client to the server and an HTTP reply message from the server to the client. So always when we send a message to, from our client to a web server, we send this message inside an HTTP request. It's called the HTTP request message. When the server wants to reply to us, the server puts the reply inside a message called the HTTP reply message. There are many types of HTTP requests and HTTP reply messages. Uh, if you uh, have taken networking, you uh, will see that You will see that we have uh, something called the GET HTTP request message, POST message, HEAD message, PUT and DELETE. So inside HTTP, we have five different types of HTTP request messages. For example, the GET message is used to send a GET request. A GET request specifies to the server, I want to get from you a certain web object. The put message is the same as the get message, but the get message contains nothing in the body of the message, while the put message contains details and data inside the body of the message. So here is an example of a general format of the HTTP request message. You can see that the message has a body. If you are sending an HTTP get message, the body will be empty. 
But if you send an HTTP put message, the body will have details. What are these details? We'll talk about them briefly. On the other hand, uh, the post message will uh, will send to the uh, server also uh, a message that will uh, post a certain object on the server. We'll talk about that shortly also. The delete, it will ask the server to delete a certain web object inside the server. This should request surely a uh, authentication to be able to change web objects inside the server. The hard message will is just for uh, debugging purposes to be able to make sure that you are able to connect to the server. These are different types of HTTP request messages. So the main two messages that you want to focus on is uh, the get message. Okay, the main two messages that we want to focus on is the get message and the put message. I will uh, go to the networking course, to the slides of the networking course, to uh, uh, illustrate uh, for you the difference between these two messages, the get message and the post message. These two messages, get and post, they are used interchangeably in many cases. But you can see that the get message will not contain any body, its body will be empty, while the post message will contain inside it some data. Get messages, you can use them when you want to get a certain object from the server or when you want to send some data from within a form in your browser to the server. In many cases, <coughs> the web page that you get from the server contains fields that you can put data into. For example, here the Google page. The Google page contains one field, which is the search field. So when I put data here and then click on enter, I'm sending a request to the server, but inside this request, I have a search query. I want to uh, let the server know. I want the server to search for me for this query. How do I send this query to the server? How, how do I uh, send the query inside the HTTP request message to the server? So generally, when you don't have any query, you're just clicking here, google.com, or, or clicking, for example, facebook.com. Here, you are not sending any details, any data from the form from any forum inside the web page, you are just requesting a, uh, an object, a web object, as it is in the server. Both of these cases are requested using get, can be requested using get messages. But how, how uh, do I send these get messages to the server? As you can see, uh, the get message contains at the beginning something called a header. So at the beginning there is a request line, then we have header lines. In the request line, you put the method, which is either get, uh, post, put, delete. You put here the name of the method, it's uh, sent as it is in text. Then there is a space. Then we have the URL of the object on the server. For example, here I have get slash books slash downloads. So this is the, the path of the URL on the server. You can put the complete path starting from HTTP or since the uh, URL of the server uh, will be uh, uh, depicted, reflected in the IP in the packet, you can skip and not put the, uh, the uh, domain name of the server, just start from the path directly. So here we put the URL after the name of the method that we are going to use. Then we put the source of the HTTP protocol that our browser uses. Uh, the version of the uh, uh, HTTP protocol that our browser uses. This is put inside something called the request line, the first line. The request line is usually followed by some header lines. Header lines display uh, options that the uh, client browser wants to make the server know about. Some of these header lines are obligatory, some of them are optional. Now, when I put get uh, as my method, and the HTTP request message when the method is get, I'm, send, I'm telling the uh, server that I want to get this object, right? But in some cases, I want to add a search query also in the uh, uh, in the message. So I want, for example, uh, if I'm sending here www.google.com.lb, I want to add it that I want to search for a certain query. How do I do that? I can do that using one of two ways. Either putting the data using a uh, certain specific 
notation after the URL. So for example here I have www.samsite.com slash animal search. Until here, until the word animal search, this is a, an ordinary URL. This is an ordinary path to a certain object on the server. Now I want to add to this path a search query. How do I add it? I put after that a question mark. Then I put the keywords related to the search query after the question mark. So I mean here they, they put they have put here monkeys and bananas. So uh, uh, monkeys is the value that was inserted by the user in a certain text field in the form, and banana is another value that was inserted in the uh, by the user in another text field in the form. These are separated by what? By an AND symbol. So the AND symbol represents that this is the AND of the value that was entered by a user into a certain uh, text field. And then the end uh, percent is the separator. Then this is the value of an another value that was inputted by the user in another text field. So you uh, take the values from the different text fields inside the form. You put them in the uh, after the uh, uh, URL separated by a question mark from the URL, and you separate these values by an end percent. And simple. And then you send this complete URL with the input data to the server. At the server, uh, it will recognize that the URL contains input data by observing the question mark. Whenever any URL contains a question mark, then it means that the user has sent data from a form with this URL. The data will be extracted after the question mark and the server will know how to associate this each one of this data with a certain text field by separating the data from each other using the AND percent and then associating each data with its corresponding text field. Now you can do this or you can use the POST method. In the POST method, instead of putting the data inside the URL, you put the data in the body of the POST method. So the body of the GAT is always empty, but the body of the POST will contain some data. As you can see here, inside the body of the POST, the first line of the, uh, the post is the request line. This contains the name of the method, which is, which is post, the URL of the uh, object that I want to get, and the version of HTTP that I am using in my browser. After that, I have several uh, header lines. These header lines will specify uh, the language that I want, the type of data that I want to get, which languages I use, uh, if I want to refer to a certain uh, proxy or not, uh, if I have, uh, if this request uh, contains a cookie or not, if I want the connection to be uh, established between me and the server, and uh, maybe I will send other requests on the same connection to the server, or I want to cut the connection and just send one request, these header lines they specify these options inside the packet. Now, after the header lines, you have a line separator, empty line, and then you have the body of the post. The body of the post will contain the data that you want to send. By the user. Here, for example, I have username equal admin, then and percent, then password equal password, and login equal login. So we have here three fields. One field is called username. The value that was entered by the user to this field is the word admin. Another field is called password. The value that was entered by the user is password. The third field is called login. Also, the user has entered a value called equal to login. So th this is how I put the data in the post message, but in the get message, I, uh, I put the data after the URL of the uh, web, uh, object that I want to get. Another uh, types of uh, uh, HTTP request messages uh, are the post, uh, uh, sorry, are the put. Uh, the put is used to upload data, to upload files, documents from the uh, client to the server. So uh, the only way to upload is by using the put HTTP request. Get and POST are used to get uh, uh, web objects from the server, while PUT is used to send web objects to the server. And the URL that you put, uh, that you insert after the PUT uh, uh, keyword, is the URL uh, that you want this web object that you are sending in the body of the PUT to be saved in at the server. And the delete is used to delete a certain web object on the server.
Now this is the, that, that was the details related to HTTP requests. For more details, you can review what we have taken in networking course and know about the various details related to HTTP requests. When an HTTP request reaches the server, it uh, examines the request, extracts from it the various lines, the request line and the header lines, and if the request contains a body, it extracts the body. It processes the uh, data inside the HTTP request, and it will reply to the web client with an HTTP reply message. Similar to HTTP request, the HTTP reply message also contains a certain format. It will also contain a method, a URL, version, header lines, and the body of the message. Now, uh, uh, HTTP replies, this was the, sorry, this was the uh, format of HTTP request only. For HTTP reply, I don't know if I have it here. Yes, this is the general format of an HTTP reply or response message. First, uh, in the uh, first line of the message, uh, similar to the request line, we have something called the status line. The status line contains three fields also. The version of the HTTP protocol that is used by the server, the status code, and then the status phrase. Status code, each type of uh, event that happens by the server and the server wants the client to know this event, then the, each type of event will have a certain specific status code. For example, if the server was able to uh, get the object for the client and was able to put the object in the body of the HTTP response and send this object to the client, then the uh, status code will be 200, which means that success in obtaining the object and sending it to the client. So 200 means success. Status phrase is the same as status code, but in text. So status code is just in numbers, status phrase is in text. So here the phrase 200, the code 200, corresponds to the phrase OK. OK means everything went well, and the server was able to get the object and send it to the cloud. After the status line in the response message, we have several header lines also, similar to the header lines of the HTTP request message. Uh, one of the header lines is uh, whether the server has kept the connection alive or has closed the connection. Uh, one of the important header lines is the last modified date and time of the object. This date and time is used by the client to cache the object and to know when it should invalidate the object and request for a new copy of the object from the server. Usually in HTTP responses, when the server is sending files or documents or web objects to the client, the, the document or the object web object is put inside the body of the HTTP response. So we might have here different, uh, different types, different kinds of data that represent different objects. Text objects could be put here as text. Uh, web objects, web pages could be put here as HTML code. So the HTML code of the web page that the client will display if we are requesting an HTML page, the HTML code will put inside the body of the HTTP response. If you are requesting a PDF file, then the binary data of the PDF file will be put here, and so on. <coughs> Another example of uh, status code and status phrase, when the server doesn't find the web object that you are uh, sending a request for, for example, the object might have been deleted from the server or the object might have been moved to another server, or to another location in the server. In this case, the server will reply with a status code equal to 404, and the status phrase will be not found. This is the most famous uh, uh, status uh, line response, because the browser displays this, displays this response each time it gets it. When the browser receives a 200 OK response, it just displays the content of the web page from the body of the message. But when the, server, when the browser uh, receives a response for 104 not found, it displays this response uh, in the uh, web page that it creates. There are many other uh, responses that exist in HTTP. For example, these are some of them. Uh, some of the responses could be uh, moved permanently, which means that the object you are requesting has been moved from the location that you are sending to another location. 
Another type is the 400 bad requests. If there is an error inside the request, another status uh, code and uh, phrase is 505 HTTP version not supported. In this case, the uh, client could be using a certain HTTP version that is not supported by the server. With respect to the HTTP header lines, so with respect to HTTP header lines, as I said before, uh, uh, both HTTP requests okay, and HTTP responses, both of them might contain various header lines inside the uh, message, whether it is an HTTP request or response message. Some of these header lines, they are obligatory, they should exist in each and every message. Some of them are optional depending on the demands and needs of the uh, client or server who is sending the message. For example, one of the obligatory header lines is the connection header line. The connection specifies to the server whether you want to close the connection after the request is uh, finished or you want to keep the connection with the server open. This is related to networking and related to the uh, implementation of the TCP or UDP protocol. So I don't want you to uh, uh, understand, uh, focus much on the details of the header lines. Just understand that these are uh, uh, types of options that are exchanged between the client and the server in order to uh, 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 reach an agreement about certain things in the connection between them. Also, MIME is uh, very important, but is not very important to our web development. It's, uh, it has something related to the networking and to the details of the body of the object that you put inside the HTTP responses. When you use the MIME uh, standard, you allow the server to include multiple objects, more than one object, inside the body of the uh, HTTP response message and you, uh, the browser will uh, be, uh, be able, the web client will be able to know from the uh, format of the uh, response that it is using MIME and the body of the message contains several objects that has a certain separator between them so the web uh, browser, the client will be able to extract these objects, each one alone and uh, format them using their types I have talked about the difference between get and post, about how, how we can use the query string to put the data, the input of the user after the URL in get, and the same input can be put in the post message in the body of the message. <coughs> also, it's good for you to know general information about client side caching. Uh, whenever I request a certain web page or web object from any server, usually the client will catch uh, the will catch the web page in its memory for a certain amount of time. Uh, usually, uh, when I click, uh, when I enter the URL of uh, any uh, uh, website and inside any server, and I click on enter, uh, I get the, an, I send an HTTP request to the server, and I get the HTTP response from. Now, uh, what happens here is that your browser, as long as your browser is on, uh, it caches the, uh, the web page that you got from the web server, it caches it in memory for a certain amount of time. Also, when you get a web object, you also cache it in memory for a certain amount of time. So, suppose now that I close the web page and then I open it again. I, I want to send another, I want to get the same web page again. So, if, if I'm uh, uh, requesting the same web page or same web object again during a short period of time, then the browser will not send another HTTP request to the web server and get the object from the server again. It will use the same object that is found inside the cache memory of your device, of your machine. 
so the uh, cached object will be used by the browser it will not send a web another web uh, http request to the server but after the uh, uh, cache expires after the uh, time limit of the uh, cache object expires then the browser will consider that this object is not valid now if you request the object again in this case the browser will send a, a get request to the server but it will send the time at which it uh, obtained the uh, uh, request the object from the server inside the gap now if the object was modified since that time the server will send the same object the updated object modified object to the web browser and the browser will display to you the updated object either a web page or a web object a file or a document but if the same if this web page or object hasn't been modified at the server since the last time that you get it from the server the server will not send the object again it will just send to you a not modified http response it will send to you an http response it will uh, it, instead of uh, 200 okay it will be not modified not modified means that the object that you have is still uh, the same at the, as in the server so the web uh, uh, browser will display the object to you again whether a web page or a web object because it hasn't been modified by the server even after it, its timeline has expired general information about uh, uh, web servers a multi-tier application these are just general information to differentiate between uh, client servers and databases so the remaining of uh, uh, this chapter in general client side scripting uh, the information about uh, the w3c all of these uh, the web2 and the difference between web2 and web1 and the dominance of new applications in web2 such as social programming and so on all of these are general information uh, I don't request from you to uh, memorize this information you can just read them to get uh, uh, knowledge about them in general and to uh, uh, know this information if we mention it later in the future chapters okay, so uh, what I have covered uh, about HTTP uh, responses uh, requests and responses and the details of them is the most important thing in this chapter So I only require from you to understand these details that I focused on. Uh, types of programming languages also a general information, difference between programming languages. Uh, mainly this is everything important. Uh, what we have covered is everything important from the first chapter. Okay, these are just, just general information and revision of some things that we have taken. Okay, so with that we finish this general revision. In the next lecture, we will start with HTTP. We will start taking the details of the HTTP uh, programs and HTTP objects and how each HTTP object is uh, HTML object, sorry, is rendered by the browser when we run the HTTP program and script in the browser. So until next lecture, lecture three, uh, we will see you.